Hi there, I wanted to share another technique um, for weathering that I've used on all three of these types of helmets um, and lots of different armor and props and that's getting a chipped paint look and the way we're going to do it is to do it just like it happens on real props. Some people will do sort of a dry brush afterwards to get kind of a metallic edge um, but what I did in all of these cases is I had the base coat like in this case metal metallic base coat and then I painted the subsequent coats on top and resisted those coats and chipped that paint back down to the base coat um, to get the look and this technique is good for you know any kind of painted metal armor um, like Mandalorian armor or clone armor which often has like unit designations are painted in a color that's always chipped down to that white. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple different ways I've done this. If you haven't watched them already, um, my part one weathering tutorial video is a really good one for getting an idea of like why you're doing it, where you're doing it. Um, because sometimes weathering can be done uh, just kind of all over or evenly because you're not really thinking of why it's happening in that particular place. So that's a good one to watch before this, but um, part two is a much longer video that really goes into the deep kind of physical weathering and the application of the paint and how to get that kind of um, dirty, grimy look in all the cracks. Um, so you can watch both of those videos if you'd like, um, but this one will focus primarily on just getting a chipped paint look. To do it, um, I don't have a prop I'm working on right now that has a paint look, but I, I just took a scrap of plastic and kind of heat shaped some details, kind of like this ridge and, and uh, some dents for the metallic side. And I'm gonna um, test three different masking techniques. And masking is the act of covering something and then painting it and then removing that thing, sort of if you think of in the simplest sense, like a strip of masking tape, paint it blue, pull up the masking tape, it'll show whatever is underneath. Um, I use different techniques actually on all three of these props and I'm going to go through all three of those. So uh, the, the original technique I used was mustard as a resist. It's cheap. Most people have this in their fridge. It works. It was totally fun to, to learn that one. Um, later I graduated to white toothpaste. It's really fancy, um, which I did on uh, this helmet, mustard, toothpaste, and then this final one I used um, actual latex masking fluid, um, which is, this was intended to do this exact technique. Um, I find that um, they all have different advantages and disadvantages, but I've never actually tested them all in one place. So we're gonna do that on this video so we can make sure that my hunches are, are based on more than just a year's worth of trial and error, and we can compare ourselves. So let's get to it. Many prop makers will um, just dry brush or paint, um, like in this type of helmet, they'll paint silver on top of the green, um, which is fine, it can work. Um, and it's a technique that's great for doing like a blaster or something that just needs a light bit of silver on the edges. Um, but when you want like big chips of paint, I found the act of physically actually chipping the paint down to the metallic layer um, just gives a better look. I mean, you'll get some like, you know, physical ledges of paint in here that the weathering afterwards can catch in and really give you the look like what it's supposed to get. Um, in this Bo-Katan helmet, there's like four layers of paint. And so each time I, I masked out a little bit bigger than the one before and so it gets a really neat like actual depth i even did it with the clear coat so those parts don't even shine the same way um and that's something that you can really only get by masking each layer of paint as you go so um i masked the paint um what we're going to start with is a metallic side for doing metallic type props like your Mandalorian helmets, Endor helmet, and then a white side which I put a ridge in which is going to be for doing clone armor types. Um, the reason I'm doing two different surfaces is because um, some of the masking 
um, fluids may have different effects on the different types of fluid and I wanted to test that here. So we'll do a mustard layer, a toothpaste layer, and then a latex masking fluid layer and see how they all work out. I added some physical notches and dings like I would on clone armor um, and some dents. I just heated this and just pushed it with a wrench um, because sometimes I get those sorts of effects on my helmets and I wanted to, you know, make sure I could do it with that. So, um, that's what we're going to test. So it'll be sort of um, done across these three bands and, um, let's get started. First up is mustard and I just use, you know, a regular paintbrush, um, squirt some mustard in a little cup of some kind and paint it on. Now this stuff takes, um, you know, about an hour or more to kind of dry. I think if you've spilled mustard on a table and seen how it gets crusty, that's all the time you need. Um, so you just dip it on and paint it um, in any way you would. Now I'm gonna paint this with a color on top. I've got a couple of distinct scratches here. So I wanna make sure and hit those and a big dent, which I wanna sort of fill in. And this will be the same on all of them. I'm going to try and get the same look. And then I'm also going to chip along the edges. So the way masking works is anywhere you paint your masking substance, whatever that is, paint will not adhere to it. If you think about a, a surface, you probably need to get it really clean and, um, you know, remove sawdust before you paint stuff. Um, remove any plastic dust. Remove any you know, oily sheen of any kind. That's the normal thing you do when you're trying to make something look good. Um, in this case, we're trying to do the opposite. We're trying to give it the worst possible surface so it doesn't want to stick. Um, so on this spot here, you can see I've got some kind of scratches here. So I'm gonna use the paintbrush to get some kind of lines so that when I remove this later, it will show silver around those scratches, just like as if something had scratched, you'll notice in a car um, that scuffs, you know, someone's door dings your door and it leaves a scratch down to the metal and the paint chips around that scratch. That's the kind of look we're getting here. All right, um, be sure to do sort of raggedy edges. You don't want to like a clean, even line um, which is good because this stuff doesn't really want to be even. It's even leaving some holes. I like that. Just think about any dents or scratches you've seen in the past and what that looks like. And it's rarely like an even, smooth, you know, circle. It can be, but, um, you know, just use your judgment to do its best. Um, and then I'm going to paint along the edge of this. It's definitely kind of resisting. The paint is is almost like waxy to this mustard, so it's making it a little harder. We'll see how the other ones do. That could be one of the advantages to some of the other masking fluids. Um, I did this as my first technique and it was fun, but I've moved on. I don't use mustard anymore. Um, and I'll go into those details at the end. We'll see if it's the same as I had before, but um, the same issues I've had because we're doing this in a scientific way. So we got our two big scratches and the edge. And let's do the corner, kind of a big, bigger spot over here just so we can see what that looks like. But we've got our big dent, our two scratches. That looks good. Now I'm going to move over to the clone armor side. Um, this white, I'm going to have a, a stripe of color down here, so I wanted to, um, I need to do that first. So for this clone armor side, um, we're going to do a stripe of color, so we'll see some white and then see some color, um, and I need to do that first. So let's see, it'll be about like... That. 
So you need to tape any lines you're going to tape before you do your resist because um, you're only going to resist the parts that are going to be painted. So we're going to paint this area as a color and um, this will be our kind of raggedy edge and I'll, I'll cover this off when we actually paint it but we don't want to get any of our resist under the tape um, because it'll make the tape fail and paint will come under there so get a nice edge and then now this is our current edge of what will be our colored line so now that I have that um, you see I had these three sort of scratches going like this and some scuffs and marks on the ridges so I'm going to paint resist around those spots first just because I know I want to have like a I want that scratch to have chipped the paint whatever caused that scratch so I, I want to make sure I have some my first important pieces of weathering resisting will be around those things now this scratch continues on up to here so there definitely would be chipped paint there from whatever caused that. And I will duplicate the same pattern on the other ones. I've got these two little ding marks that I want to resist around. And then just some general kind of edge stuff. Because the edges in clone armor tend to get a lot of chips on them. But you know, almost none in this protected gap area. On here, I've got some more kind of scuff marks and physical weathering, so I'm gonna definitely do some resisting around that. In general, um, you know, you want to put more weathering on the the kind of high points and ridges. Okay, so that's our mustard resist on our metallic and our white. Next up is toothpaste. Um, I found that white toothpaste is ideal um, because you don't want to stain and you've probably seen blue toothpaste leave a kind of stain. So um, especially on clone armor, but I've just only ever used white for resisting because I had a, a guess that it was probably going to be better. Um, but probably based on the fact that mustard and toothpaste works, I'll bet lots of other household condiments and fluids would work the same way. So definitely use what you like but these are just common ones that people use in the prop making community so for this I don't make a big puddle but you could if you had a lot to do I just kind of squeeze it out of the tube and paint it right from there you may not want to put a dirty paintbrush in your toothpaste so I actually keep these sample ones from my dentist um, as prop toothpaste so it's not the same thing I'm going to try and paint the same ish pattern on this uh on this metal um, but it doesn't have to be exact I'm just I want to try and you know at least have some holes in it like this one had and some little spiky bits um, in my experience toothpaste as opposed to mustard allows you to get some finer you know little thin lines um, it has a little bit more body to it and you can kind of drop little like hanging you know see how there's like a little wisp of of toothpaste you know I can get some of that like to just catch and it will it'll it'll resist the paint so um, you know anywhere that it is not always to an exact edge but a lot of times you can get some really precise shapes and I'll do my edge stuff 
edge stuff because metallic objects often get chipped right along these the edge and so it, it just gives it a great look to have some edge resist do a couple of these dots like the other one and of course my two deep scratches But it is going to chip paint around it. All right, and on the clone armor, the same same idea painting up on top of that mask, masking tape um, and continuing my mark across. Now it's a little harder to see. That's one disadvantage to toothpaste. It's a little harder to see on your object. That mustard is very clear and obvious, but probably even on camera less so. Um, you just have to, you know, you can see a shine to it so you can make it out, but uh, it, it is a little harder to see when you're doing it. So let's put that down in the, down in, in the, negative column for toothpaste. Um, the reason I wanted to show this, I've never used mustard on white paint, but because I use a flat white, my hunch is that mustard might stain that paint in, in a way that will be really difficult to remove. So we're going to see what that looks like after I paint it, but we're doing it in a scientific way, so we will know for sure at the end of this video. Toothpaste um, drying time is also, you know, an hour-ish. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rush it, but you probably could paint it wet because it's just going to resist the paint that much better. I just don't know what it will do to the surface of the paint if there's too much moisture because, as you discover, um, moisture is a cause of a lot of those issues or not curing enough um, is a cause of a lot of painting issues. So I'm, I'm going to try and minimize that in any prop I do. Um, especially this kind of one, by just giving it time to cure. If you're in a hurry, you have a better chance of getting issues on prop building. Okay, so now we have very similar marks in our toothpaste and in our mustard. The third one we're going to do is masking fluid. Um, this is masking fluid. It's used, it's made primarily for um, watercolor painters. Um, you can paint, you know, people will use it in a watercolor painting because the white in watercolor is the paper. And if there's a spot they want to stay white all the way to the end, like a highlight or the sun, and they're going to come in and touch it with yellow at the end, they'll paint this stuff on the watercolor paper and it works almost like rubber cement in that you can just kind of roll it up when you're done with your finger. So it's actually a type of latex um, that you paint on and when it dries, it becomes totally clear. It's sort of translucent white when you're, when you're doing it. Um, and that's how you can tell when it's dry is that it's totally clear again. Um, the disadvantage to this stuff is I'll be able to reuse this mustard brush. I'll be able to reuse this toothpaste brush, but latex just wrecks a brush. So you have to use a disposable brush of some kind. So every time you use this stuff, you, you use one brush. Now this stuff is really liquidy. You can see like the painted on here. It's like just drops of water, but you can get very fine edges. Um, not the same as toothpaste, but it'll, uh, it, it works really well. It looks like this is really beating up on this. Um, but once it starts to dry a little bit, I should be able to push that edge. But it's kind of pooling into this dent. Now this stuff is what I used on that Boca 10 helmet. And I've used it on a few other props. And it is my new favorite because I, I've even used it 
on like painting a little figurine, you know, black series figure and resisting out certain areas um, and then taping next to those areas. So in areas I used to try and tape, I now paint this resist on instead because it can get a really nice, you know, perfect edge in places that are not straight or so small that tape just doesn't make sense that if you tried to tape there, paint would get under it. So I use this as the, the edge on a difficult surface. Um, I paint the resist and then paint the tape, put the tape on afterwards to ensure that I get a really clean resist. Yeah, this uh, silver is really kind of beating up the paint. These kind of connected. It's just going to look a little different, but I, that wasn't intentional. But you know what? It's fine. That happens on parallel scratches. Do some of my edge stuff here. So this stuff, unlike those other two, you can see when it's dry and cured, it, it dries fairly quickly. It's more like 10 or 15 minutes. So that's an advantage for latex is um, the dry time is just, it's obvious and quick. Now I'm not certain that mustard takes a long time, but you know, it's just from a lifetime of making sandwiches and cutting boards. I think it takes at least an hour to really start to dry, but a couple hours to really be fully dry. All right, that's our dent. Um, oh, let me get a few more of these kind of raggedy edges to make sure it looks similar to the stuff I had before. And on to the clone armor. I've never used it on this white paint. I've done it mostly with metallics lately. I've only had it for about six months, so I haven't used it because my last clone armor was just a plain grunt, so there was no paint chipping to do. So this will be a first time for this, this type of thing. is also fairly hard to see on white, but um, the shine is really obvious. So when you're painting it from my point of view, it's, it's, it's easy to see because there's this kind of glossy shine that catches the light, um, but it is not as easy as mustard. All right, um, I think they look pretty much the same. Oh, I need this one. All right, we've got all three done here. Now this brush, this latex will dry in these bristles. I haven't found a way to really get it out. There might be some sort of solvent that works, but in my experience, this is a one-time use brush. So sometimes I've been able to pull out some and do a couple more touch-ups, but it, the brush is mostly destroyed at that point. So we're gonna leave this stuff and uh, await the cure. And see if that works. Yesterday, once the different masking fluids had seemed dry enough, I took it and hit it with some spray paint in some good weather. It was nice and warm and dry. I just had some scrap um, colors around that I used for this experiment. 
um, but you can see the paint is kind of satin, but all the little lumpy spots really show up easily, which helps uh, for this next part. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the mask on the white part because this is what clone armor does. And often the mask pulls some of the resist on the latex masking fluid. Um, for the, the latex part, we're gonna have to, we're gonna be able to just peel it here. Um, for the other two types of masks, I find it's easier to do with underwater. Um, but here, I'm just gonna use my fingernail and anywhere there's one of these little lumps on the latex part, you can just kind of get it under your nail and then it comes right off as sort of like rubber cement does. So that, that's what it does. It just pops off the paint right in those areas. And sometimes, you know, once you get a corner started because it's latex, it all kind of pulls in one piece, cracking the paint as it goes. So that's what that does. And as long as your paint's cured, you can just kind of run your fingernail around anywhere that had that just to make sure, and it should just catch and pop. So I'll do that on this. So, um, you know, we can see the edge has some here. So if you were just kind of running your nail around, it would just catch. And the paint that's not on a mask will just pop, will, will stay attached. And anything that has the fluid should come off fairly easily. You just want to make sure you get every last little piece. You can always see these little lumps. So if there's some here I've missed. So if you can see a lump in the paint, um, you don't want to scratch too hard with anything. If it's like this one's, um, you know, your, your nail could scratch through the silver paint below. So just be a, you know, a little bit careful. It looks like I'm doing that. Um, in this tiny little spot, there's a little black primer underneath, so it looks like I scratched through the silver. So, you know, just enough to catch what little is there. And there we go, that's the latex masking fluid. You can see where I did that. Um, the next part to do the other ones, I'm going to do it under running water. Um, we can do it, I'm going to use a butter knife. Definitely do some of these big parts with the toothpaste, um, but I, it works better when you have some water running on it because uh, it just carries all those little chunks away. Um, and there's toothpaste and mustard on this, and you want to wash that off at the same time. The latex doesn't have anything to wash away. It completely comes off with your finger. I use some water and a butter knife to gently encourage the mask to come off with the toothpaste and the mustard. Just kind of rub it anywhere you've seen the mask and it should help it pop free. I found it doesn't really pop free without some encouragement. Unfortunately, I recorded a lot more of this and I guess I Somehow it wasn't recording, so you're getting to see the tail end of it. But and as I suspected, you know, the mustard's fine when it comes to metallics. That's all I'd ever used it on before. Because it has a little bit of yellow, but the yellow doesn't really stay. But on white, that yellow is too much of a stain. That turmeric that's in mustard is really a 
strong stain, so it doesn't really work well on white. Okay, we have some results. Um, I have my test here with the mustard, toothpaste, and latex masking fluid. I've used all three of these on several projects with, you know, different types of surfaces and I actually learned something doing this video, which is great because we did it in a scientific way. Um, so the primary results I found is that all three work. All three do the job and probably there are other similar things that would work. Um, the main um, things I assumed would happen that did happen were this, that mustard works fine on metallics, um, but on white paint, it leaves a yellowy residue, so it's probably not usable at all for clone armor because it's always gonna have some kind of residual stuff, um, but it works fine on, on metallics. I was considering retiring mustard as a resist because of that yellowing effect, but uh, I had done it on this Endor Trooper and I loved how it worked. And even got some really, you know, fine, I took like a, a, a straw and used it to mark with mustard. I mean, it had really tight um, definition. But what I didn't realize is that um, mustard keeps the metallics shine pretty well, but both of the other ones dulled the metal. Now, I had seen this happen with toothpaste, and so I was aware that toothpaste has a mild abrasive. That's how it polishes your teeth. And I thought that abrasive was probably just, you know, rubbing on the on the metallic or at least reacting with it the way a lot of clear coats do and dulling it. But um, the liquid latex masking fluid also does the same thing. Something about um, that compound is dulling the metal, but the mustard didn't. So by chance using mustard on this metal resist um, ended up working really well. This is a Rust-Oleum, you know, metallic so it's not like the best metallic so if you're doing a metallic um, armor like Mandalorian armor or Endor Trooper or any other one um, you might have to find that mythical clear coat that works on metals like a 2k spray or if you're doing airbrush paint there's a few that that work well with their own coating um, that would allow you to keep that because this thing was really a metallic mirrory sheen before this whole process um, that happens with many paints but it seems even more important in this case. Uh, the mustard still dulled the metallic a little bit, um, but not nearly as much as the toothpaste and the liquid masking fluid. Now, uh, I gotta say that I used this stuff for the mirror shine, and often this stuff looks great out of the can, and then the next thing you do to it turns it completely dull. On this um, Bo-Katan helmet, you know, the metallics are still pretty shiny um i had another issue that gave it a little texture that i didn't want but that was done with spastics chrome which is a much better metallic paint so um and this had latex masking fluid multiple times on it for each layer um and it still remained shiny so it could be that this rust-oleum just doesn't like anything on top which is probably way more likely but um you know good to know that um, mustard also still does really well. Um, and then uh, toothpaste and the liquid latex work the same um, on paint chipping and pretty much the same over here too. So um, you do have to run the toothpaste under the water to remove it. The liquid latex masking fluid is just so easy to just peel and roll off. So in that way, I feel like that's um, an advantage for it, but, um, surprising results. Like now I know maybe I will use different masking techniques for different products. I was totally sure I was going to just end up finding that the latex was my new favorite and I was going to use it on everything. But now I know that, uh, certain props and certain color applications like different masking fluids. So there you go. Anyway, Good luck getting a chip paint effect um, on a cool prop in your future and keep crafting. All right, bye.